Oh, hello there. I'm both Chanda Cuper. In this class, I'll read Chapter 25 of Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen For you all Us The Pride and Prejudice Jane Austen Chapter 25 After a week spent in professions of love and schemes of felicity, Mr. Collins was called from his amiable Charlotte by the rival of Saturday. The pain of separation, however, might be alleviated on his side by preparations for the reception of his bride, as he had reason to hope that shortly after his next return into her for a child of the day would be fixed that was to make him the happiest of men. He took leave of his relations at Lumburn with as much solemnity as before wished. His fair cousin's health and happiness again and promised their father another letter of thanks. On the following Monday, my Bennet had the pleasure of receiving her. Brother and his wife who came, as usual, to spend the Christmas at Wilburn. Mr. Gardiner was a sensible gentleman like man greatly. Superior to his sister, as well by nature is education. The Netterfield. Ladies would have had difficulty in believing that a man who lived by trade and within view of his own warehouses could have been so. Well bred and agreeable. My gardener, he was several years younger. The mice Bennett and mice Phillips was an amiable, intelligent, elegant woman and a great favourite with her lumber and nieces. Between the two. Aldest and herself especially, there subsisted a very particular regard. They had frequently been staying with her in town. The first part of my Scardino's business on her arrival was to distribute her presents and describe the newest fashions. When this was done, she had a less active part to play. It became her turn to listen. My Spinet had many grievances to relate and much to complain of. They had all been very ill used since she last saw her sister. Two of her girls had been on the point of marriage and after all there was nothing. In eight. I do not blame Jane, she continued, for Jane would have got Mr. Bingley if she could. But Liddy, oh sister, it is very hard to think. That she might have been Mr. Collins's wife by this time, had not it. Been for her own perverseness. He made her an offer in this very room. And she refused him. The consequence of it is that Liddy Lucas will have. A daughter married before I have, and that on burn estate is just as much entails as ever. The Lucas are very awful people indeed. Tisto, they're all for what they can get. I am sorry to say it of them, but so it is. It makes me very nervous and poorly to be thwarted. So in my own family, and to have neighbours who think of themselves before anybody else. However, your coming just at this time is the greatest of comforts, and I am very glad to hear what you tell us of. Long sleeves. My gardener to whom the chief of this news had been given before in. The course of Jane and Elizabeth's correspondence with her made her sister a slight and sir, and in compassion to her nieces, turn the conversation. When alone with Elizabeth afterwards, she spoke more on the subject. It seems likely to have been a desirable match for Jane, said she. Oh. I'm sorry it went off, but these things happen so often. A young man, such as you describe Mr. Bingley, so easily falls in love with a pretty girl for a few weeks and when accident separates them so easily. Forget, sir, that these sort of inconstancies are very frequent. An excellent consolation in its way, said Elizabeth, but it will not do for us. We do not suffer by accident. It does not often happen. That the interference of friends will persuade a young man of. Independent for Chin to think no more of a girl whom he was violently in. Of with only a few days before. 
but that expression of violently in love is so hackneyed, so. That fall so indefinite that it gives me very little idea. It is this. Often applied to feelings which arise only from a half hours. Acquaintance asked a real, strong attachment. Pray how violent was. Mr. Bingley's love. I never saw a more promising inclination, he was growing quite. Inattentive to their people and wholly engrossed by her. Every time. They met, it was more decided and remarkable. At his own ball he. Offended to our three young ladies by not asking them to dance, and I spoke to him twice myself without receiving an answer. Could there be? Finer symptoms? Is not general in civility the very essence of love? Oh yes, of that kind of love which I suppose him to have felt. Bah. Wow. Jane, I am sorry for her because with her disposition she may not get over it immediately. It had better have happened to you, Lizzie, you. Would have laughed yourself out of it sooner. But do you think she would? We prevailed on to go back with us. Change of sea might be of. Civis and perhaps a little relief from home may be as useful as. And then. Elizabeth was exceedingly pleased with this proposal and felt persuaded. Of her sister's ready acquiescence. I hope, added my scarred inner, that no consideration with regard to her. This young man will influence her. We live in so different a part of. Tan, all our connections are so different and, as you will know, we go. Add so little, that it is very improbable they should meet at all. Unless he really comes to see her. And that is quite impossible, for he is now in the custody of his. Friend and Mr. Darcy would no more suffer him to call on Jane in such a part of London. My dear aunt, how could you think of it? Mr. Darcy may perhaps have heard of such a place as Great Church Street, but he would hardly think a man's solution enough to cleanse him from its impurities, where he wants to enter it and depend upon it, Mr. Bingley never stirs without him. So much the better. I hope they will not meet at all, but does not Jane. Correspond with his sister. She will not be able to help calling. She will drop the acquaintance entirely. But in spite of the certainty in which Elizabeth affected to place this point, as well as the still more interesting one of Bingley's being. Withheld from seeing Jane, she felt a solicitude on this subject which convinced her on examination that she did not consider it entirely hopeless. It was possible and sometimes she thought it probable that his affection might be reanimated and the influence of his friends successfully combated by the more natural influence of Jane's attractions. Miss Bennet accepted her invitation with pleasure and the Bingley's were no otherwise in her thoughts at the same time then as she Hoped by Caroline's not living in the same house with her brother, she might occasionally spend a morning with her without any danger of seeing him. The gardeners stayed a week at Lumburn and what with the Phillipses, the Lucase and the officers, there was not a day without its engagement. My spinet had so carefully provided for the entertainment of her brother and sister that they did not once sit down to her family. Then uh, when the engagement was for home, some of the officers always made part of it, of which officers Mr. Wickham was sure to be one, and on these occasions my scar dinner, rendered suspicious by Elizabeth's warm commendation of him, narrowly observed them both, without supposing them from what she saw to be very seriously in love, their preference of each other was plain enough to make her a little uneasy, and she resolved to speak to Elizabeth on the subject before she left. Her foreshire and represent to her the imprudence of encouraging such an attachment. To my gardener, Wickham had one means of affording pleasure. Unconnected with his general powers, about ten or a dozen years ago, before her marriage she had spent a considerable time in that very part 
of Derbyshire to which he belonged. They had, therefore, many. Acquaintance in coming and Thuwakam had been little there since. The death of Darcy's father five years before it was yet in his power. To give her fresher intelligence of her former friends than she had been. In the way of procuring. My Gardiner had seen Pemberley and known the late Mr. Darcy by. Character perfectly well. Here, consequently, was an inexhaustible. Subjective discourse. In comparing her recollection of Pemberley with the minute description which Wickham could give and in bestowing her. Tribute of praise on the character of a slave possessor she was. Delighting both him and herself on being made acquainted with the present Mr. Darcy's treatment of him she tried to remember something of. That gentleman's repeated disposition when quite a lad which might agree with it and was comforted at last that she recollected having. Had Mr. Fitzwilliam Darcy formerly spoken of as a very proud, all-natured boy, to be continued.